Hey everyone, welcome back to Endless Money Pits. This is a 2014 Nissan Maxima, and today I'll be showing you how to flush the brake fluid. Nissan recommends replacing the brake fluid in this car every 20,000 miles or every two years under normal driving conditions, and every 10,000 miles or once a year when driven in severe conditions. Brake fluid easily absorbs moisture out of the air, which can lower its boiling point and cause a dangerous situation when braking hard, so it's a good idea to change it on a regular basis using a fresh bottle. The brake fluid in the reservoir might appear low if your brake pads are worn out, so watch my video on how to change them before bleeding the fluid or adding more. This will help you avoid an overflow at the brake fluid reservoir when the brake caliper pistons are pushed back in at the time of pad replacement. Also, brake fluid will damage paint and plastic, so be careful and quickly clean off any brake fluid that gets on the car or on your skin. You'll need somebody to sit in the car and pump the brake pedal for you, but this is a pretty simple procedure, so let's get to it. Here are the tools that I used for this job. Torque wrench, 21 mm socket, eight mm wrench, impact wrench, floor jack, and a set of jack stands. For this job, I also needed a creeper, a stool, a light, some silicone tubing, a plastic container, a funnel, rubber gloves, and a bottle of DOT3 brake fluid. There are links in the description for everything I used. When bleeding the brakes, you should do them in this order, starting with the wheel furthest from the brake fluid reservoir, then working your way closer. This will minimize contamination of the new fluid from the old fluid. The first thing to do is jack up the car and set it on jack stands, but if you're not using an impact wrench, you'll want to break loose the lug nuts before you jack up the car. You could start by lifting the rear of the car, the entire car, or you could just lift one corner at a time, but don't get underneath a car that isn't supported by a jack stand. Remove the lug nuts and pull the wheel off. If the wheel is stuck to the hub, you can usually free it by hitting the outside edge of the wheel with a plastic mallet. On the back of each brake caliper, there is a bleed screw that should be covered with a rubber cap. Pull off the rubber cap and get the 8mm wrench on the screw before attaching the silicone tubing. The other end of the tubing should drain into a container suitable for capturing brake fluid. Have your helper pump the brake pedal a few times until it becomes stiff, and hold pressure on the pedal. Open the bleed screw just enough to allow some fluid to be forced out as the brake pedal goes to the floor, then quickly close the screw. Once the bleed screw is closed, repeat this process of having your helper build pressure while you release it from the bleed screw. It's important to keep the brake fluid reservoir from running dry and sucking air into the lines, so I topped it off every five cycles or so. You should continue bleeding the line until you see clean fluid coming out, but sometimes it's hard to tell, so don't be afraid to use up to a quarter of the bottle on each brake line. When you're done, remove the hose and the wrench from the bleed screw and reinstall the dust cap. I'll just get the lug nuts hand tight until I can torque them with the car on the ground. The lug nuts on this car should be torqued to 83 foot-pounds. Pump the brakes a few times, make sure the brake fluid reservoir is filled to the full mark, and close the hood because we're done. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for more of the best DIY videos on the internet. And until next time, just keep throwing money at it. <laughs>